Hi Floss Tube, it's Lorna again, Five Stitcher back again for some more. It is Thursday the 26th of January 2017, just in case you've forgotten. And I thought I would come on and do Floss Tube number two and say thank you to everyone, and I mean everyone, who watched my last video. I can't believe it. I, on I honestly did not expect it. Thank you so much. Thank you to everyone for the comments. Thank you to everyone who's subscribed to me. I truly, truly appreciate it. And I really didn't expect it. Thank you also to Ginger Gerald Stitcher who put a shout out to me on his last video. Thank you so much. Again, I really didn't expect it. And I look forward to seeing some more of his projects too. So, to start, where do I start? I've got a finish. I've made a little bit of pro uh, progress on s one whip in particular. In fact, two whips. I've nearly finished another one. Um, and my round robin came back to me, so I have my last square to stitch in that. And not much else because work kind of took over these last two weeks. So. I'll show you what I've got, I'll show you what I'm working on and um, I'll show you the little tiny, little tiny bit of haul that I've got because obviously I'm doing Stitch From Stash so the only haul I'm getting are the fabrics of the month. Um, I had an order from Crafty Kitten that I put in in December that arrived last week and just literally this morning just as I was organising to come and do this video the postie arrived with my jodery fabric of the month and thread of the month so yeah I'm going to show you that as well. So I'm going to start with the finish and it's a little finish. I haven't completely finished it off because I haven't decided how I'm going to finish it off but it's the Hufflepuff bookmark that I did. Um, so someone when I showed it before I think in um, I think it was in one of the groups um, someone asked where it came from. It came from a book that is just Harry Potter um, cross stitches and it was in French and I bought it years ago. I, I don't know if you can still get it but I'm assuming that it was okayed by the Harry Potter front franchise because it had Warner Brothers printed all over the back of it but I finished the Hufflepuff bookmark which I did for my daughter because much as she's only 10 She's sorted into Hufflepuff, so that's for her. I just need to finish it off now. My nearly finished of my whips, if I can find the right one, find the right one, is my, I've just knocked my needle minder off, is my Eeyore, the baby sampler. So I still don't know who I'm going to do this for. Um, I, I have no idea who I started it for but I have finished all the stitching and this white was a pain in the backside to do. I decided rather than just using the plain white I decided to go clever and I decided to use the DMC light effects and let's get the number it's E5200 so I used um, the B5200 and so I used one strand of this, one strand of the B5200. This is a pain in the backside to stitch with. And I used shortened lengths but it was still a pain and I have never been so happy to get all the stitching done. So back stitch to do, won't finish it completely, it will be a UFO until someone I know has a boy because for some reason I'd done it in blue, so I'd obviously done it for a boy. So it will get finished off completely once someone decides to have a boy. So that's that one. And um, my other whip that I've been working on, I've obviously been doing my 10 a day um, stitches. That's the wrong one. I've got too many of these bags and I haven't replied to you yet, Lindy Stitches, but you are to blame for my love of so much to love bags. Yeah, Tracy, I have this one too. Yeah, I have it in all sizes. Um, so, um, my 10 a day, I haven't done today's yet. 
but this is where I'm up to, so this is up to day 25. Um, so the next few days it's going to be slow progress because it's just going to be filling in because this is actually a 10 um, block here so I'm literally, I've, I've literally managed to get it so it'll be doing a row a day um, and I think I've figured out that by the end of the month I'll be up to the top of that middle section but that's where I am with that so far and then I've also worked on Maggie. I've done a lot of work on Maggie, mainly because um, I've been doing uh, number counts for stitches on some um, cross-stitch groups, um, so I used her, but I have actually managed to do it. Doesn't seem a lot to me, but I think, you know, comparing like for like, I have done quite a bit, because you can see the outline of the dog coming in here. There's meant to be a little Labrador sitting under the table. I've got a lot of this box filled in. It's just literally the half stitches left to go and the top's just the half stitches. Um, and then just filling in the colour of the cat around here. So I'm thinking of finishing this block first and then moving into the, the middle block because I don't know when I'm going to do this, but this, this section here is going to be a majority of black which I'm not really looking forward to. But yeah, I got quite a bit done in this section here. So I'm quite pleased with the progress on her. I'm not, I'm still kind of into her just now, so I'm not quite ready to put her away just yet. And the last one I did a little bit on, but not a huge amount, was the fabulous woman in history. From Clouds Factory, their stitch along for the year. I can't remember if I'd shown any progress on this or if I just showed the material, but so far I have the table and the start of the flag. You can see the start of the flag just there. So that's as far as I've got with that. Um, then I haven't really worked on anything else, so. I think my take to work is going to be the baby sampler for the girl at my work because I need to get that done because she's due, she's going to be getting induced next month. Um, so it's a pattern from a cross stitcher from about 2001, making sure there wasn't any pattern on the other side there. That's what it's going to be when it's finished. And at the moment, I don't have it here with me right now, but I've, I've put in the first row of that duck there. So it, it hopefully shouldn't take too much longer. Um, I think I'm going to use it um, for one of the cross stitch. It's fun challenges because it's the next week, um, the sort of weekly sale is... Um, stitch on something with birds. So you've got to do X number of stitches on something that's got birds. Hello, ducks or birds. So yeah, I'm going to make that one work for that. My round robin. It came back. Now, if you haven't worked a round robin before, the way it works is um, group of four. Um, so you pick your project that can be easily split into four pieces. Um, so either four squares of roughly the same size or a pattern, a whole pattern where the um, it can be easily split into similar size pieces and I think the aim was for a 60 by 60 block, 60 by 60 square and um, it took me a while to pick one and I've picked one and we all got separated into groups and I'd started working on mine um, and then as we were starting the piece, we all we all messaged each other. Apart from one girl, didn't come into the group, and you kind of think, okay, she doesn't want to come into the group. No biggie, you know. As long as she does the round robin, who who gives? But we hadn't heard anything, hadn't heard anything, and then nothing appeared from her to the girl she was maybe sending to. So we messaged the girl that had organised the whole thing, and she messaged her, never heard anything back, so it ended up that it was just a group of three. So I had stitched my piece 
I'd stitched all the border, stitched my square and I've now got the last square to stitch as well but likewise the other girls have got um, their last square to stitch as well. So the phoenix I showed in my last video was from um, Charlotte's um, round robin. So this is my one. So this was the square that I did and I can't remember if I've got the pattern name, I'll get it in a minute. This was the pattern that I did. This is the one I did the spring. And then Charlotte was the next one on the list and she stitched Summer. And then Claire was the last one who had it and she stitched Winter. Which just leaves me the Autumn to stitch. So at the moment that's how the whole piece is looking. So I've just got that last square to do and actually once you get into the squares it doesn't take that that long. It's not a huge piece. I'm just going to get the, the working copy out and see if it's got the name on it and it's just a four season sampler and I think I did have a name for it but I don't have it on this bit. But it was out of a cross stitcher magazine again it was from a 2001 copy that I got from my mother. So yeah so I've got that to do so I might work on that um, over the next couple of weeks as well. So haul wise yeah if you're on Stitch Mania and I can't remember which other group I shared it in you may have seen me post a picture of stuff that my mum brought round. She brought round a box. I'm going to try and lift it right now. It weighs an absolute ton. I can't even lift it now. There we go. She brought round this is full of magazines and books. I haven't even had time to go through it but it's things like I don't know how I don't know how useful that's going to be. Cross Stitch Gallery website guide. Probably half of them don't exist anymore. Um, Jane Greenoff's little book of wildflowers. It'll just be some patterns. They're just basics. Um, there was someone in one of the groups I can't find. Can't find the book now. means I've put it somewhere to have a look at. I think it was five, 501 or uh, any number of essential cross stitch related. It wasn't all that exciting. There wasn't any, you know, maybe if you're a complete absolute beginner you might have found it useful but it wasn't wasn't all that handy. I'm just trying to have a quick look to see but a majority of what was in were the old cross stitch quick magazines and this one's from 2004. You don't get these anymore. To be honest nothing's jumped out at me yet because they are just little ones but like there's a Christmas one there so I'll probably get some Christmas designs out of it but there's nothing at this moment in time jumping out at me. Okay. Forever friends. I like forever friends but I don't know. But we'll see. I'll need to have a good look through them and see if there's anything that I fancy doing. Haul wise, so at the tail end of last year, um, because I love her bag so much, I signed up to the So Much To Love bag of the month. But because of shipping costs to the UK and what have you, I've just gone for the little sidekick bag that can be used for carrying around your scissors or it can be used as a makeup bag but I love her bags they're just gorgeous but this is a little bag for January and it's gorgeous it's just it's gorgeous and it came with a little pair of scissors and a little scissor holder as well Love it. Fantastic. My next one that came through the door, just came through last week, was um, 
my December mystery box from Crafty Kitten, which was turquoise. Excuse me, I'm going to have a drink. Tea. Um, so the theme last in December was um, turquoise. So I got the 9 by 12 28 count Jobelin. And it's just bluey greens on the material. And then um, you get the threads. So there's the Krennic, which is a turquoisey colour, which is quite pretty. It's colour number 029. It's a number four braid. So that'll go into my stash. A little packet of Mill Hill beads. And then a classic colour works in Key Largo, which is sort of greenies and sort of pale blue. And then the last one, as soon as I opened it up, and I was like, that's the colour I needed. I didn't order the week's dye works for the fabulous women in history. But look, the Capri. It was in the mystery box. I haven't got that far. I haven't started on the blue. I might just use the, cul the called for colour. And then I'd also put in an order to her for the material for the Frosted Pumpkin Stitchery. Um, Stitch Along, which is Happily Ever After. I haven't started it yet, but literally this just arrived last week. I'm doing it in Opal and the colour is, if we get the right piece, uh, Topaz Ice Opal and it's a uh, 28 count Brittany. And I don't know if you're going to get it here, I can see the sparkles just a little bit. Um, but it's kind of an icy blue and I thought it would look good on that so I just need to I just need to find the time to start that now. And then today my jewellery just arrived so I am signed up, I had been signed up for her fabric of the month since October last year and then this year she's bringing out one that is, she's bringing, I think she's doing one that's a month of past, uh, brights, month of neutrals, month of pastels so you could join whichever one you wanted so I joined the pastels and the neutrals because I'm not really into brights I might change later, who knows but this is the fabric of the month um, for January, which is Year of the Rooster, it's called. And it's fairly neutral. I don't think you're really getting the tonal difference that's kind of a, a reddy colour, sort of pinky colour going in there as well. You'll see it more on the thread, I think. That's the material. And then the pastels for this month is called Snow Queen. It's an ice dye. Oh, I thought I'd open this up, but I haven't. Okay. And this is a 28, 28 count Brittany as well. There we go. It's quite pretty. It's very neutral. Be nice for a baby sampler actually, for a girl's baby sampler, probably. And then the neutrals, I'm getting that one in a cashel linen 28 count and it's a nice dye as well. It's called Oak King. It's sort of browny greeny and white. It's quite it's quite earthy. Quite like that one. Just don't know what I'm gonna do on it. And then I get her thread of the month as well. So let's open that up. So this is the um, limited edition for January, which is the year of the rooster. And you might see the colour in there a bit. So it's sort of brownies and yellows. And that's that one. And then, so the thread of the month I also got. Uh, Looney Tunes, two of them, so pinky reds, orangey reds, in fact there's an orange in there, nice. 
and then a Captain Caveman. That's the wrong one. Is that the right one? Yep, yeah, Captain Caveman. Oranges, browns, and greys. And then Bagpuss. And yes, I am old enough to know who Bagpuss is. Here we go, Bagpuss. And then this one is Fred, Flint, Fred Flintstone. I'm tying it the same way. Blues, oranges, and greys. And then last one is Tom and Jerry. So you know the colour of them, you know what colour's coming out. So browns, whites and greys. I have to say I love stitching with the jewellery threads. They're really nice to stitch with. And I don't think I've got very much more to go. People had been asking about the Celtic Noel, so I've done I'm gonna try and be clever. I've done a little video that I'm going to try and edit in at the back, which gives you a closer look. Um, it's not stitched onto the mat. The mat's actually cut round her skirt. It was actually the, the whole mount's been cut to her. Um, and for everyone that wants to see the puppies, I've got a little video of them. They're not very playful in it, but to be honest, when they're playful, you can't get a good video of them. So... I'm going to try and put that on the end as well. Um, and I'm just going to give one last shout out for a majority of my needle minder. Some of these I've made myself. I've got all the sparklies. All these sparklies. All these ones. These ones I made myself, so ignore them. All my pretty ones down the bottom. Needle Keep Emporium on Etsy. Catherine, you were evil. You made me buy something in my stitch from Stash Month. I'm going to make sure people annoy you and come to you for minders. If you're in the UK and want sparkly needle minders, go to Needle Keep Emporium. She's fantastic. And I've got, I'll have some haul coming from her probably in the next day or so. So thanks for that, Catherine. Okay, so I don't know when I'll be able to post again. I'll try and do another one soon. Probably won't be next week because work's just looking like it's just not going to happen next week. Um, and I'll need to see how I'm feeling the, the following week because I'm coming off of night shift. Um, <clears throat> so until then, I hope you're all well. I hope you'll have a good stitchy time and I hope you get lots of stitching done. And I'll see you later on. Bye everyone. This is my Lavender and Lace Noel. First Lavender and Lace that I ever did. I, I probably did this one about 16 years ago, maybe it was probably around about the 2000 mark. And got it all professionally framed. I think the frame cost more than the actual kit cost. But it was so worth it. She has hung on my wall since she's come home. And to the point that I can't actually remove her from the wall now. So, there you go. That's my Lavender and Lace Noel. Okay, so here's a little quick photo, video even, of the puppies. Mm -hmm. And the little princess is getting a little bit excited. Hello. And the theme with the puppies this time is the kids have called them Hermione. She's the only girl. Harry. I wonder why. And sleepy one down here is Ron. He's a little sleepy boy. He's the happy boy. They've just gone back in after a little play and Madam's still wide awake. And then i get some of the bigger dogs across. Scotty! Oh, handsome. This is Scotty. 
He's a handsome boy. He's a big suit. He's going to be all over me just for two seconds. And this is Mum. Scotty's not the dad. But this is Mum, Tara. This is Tara. Mm -hmm. And this is our old girl. She's called Ginny. Can you sense the theme? She's, she's a little bit older. She's about 11 now, I think. And this is our oldest girl. This is Tammy. He's just perfect in every way. And Scotty just constantly wants cuddles. Because he's a mummy's boy and he likes his cuddles. But that's all the dogs.